Hey everybody, welcome to Adam Makes Beer. My name's Adam and today we are going to be showing you how we do our cell counts on fermenting beer. I'm in the lab right now. I'm doing tank checks on a weekend. We do tank checks 365 days a year at Sonder. Today I'm in on a Saturday doing tank checks and part of that is checking the tanks, temperature, fermentation status, cell count tank pressure, bunging, et cetera. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go out and get a sample of a beer that I need to do cell count on today. It's probably the last one that we're going to have to do and I might be bunging that tank today as well. We're going to be doing a nine part beer, one part, I'm, man. We're gonna be doing a nine part water, one part beer dilution for this so we can figure out how many cells we have at this stage in fermentation. So with all that said, let's go out and grab our sample. All right, so I'm over here at tank four, which I need to take my sample on. And I'm gonna crack the sample valve and you're gonna see me rinse the outer edge of this container just to make sure that we have all the water out of it. I'm gonna dump this small sample and then take my actual sample off of the tank. What I do after I take a sample off a tank like this, I will come back and I will spray it down with water and then also hit it with uh, some alcohol afterwards. All right, so let's head back to the lab. Okay, so this sample needs to be degassed in order to get an appropriate reading on our density meter and in order to be able to get a good view of what's going on with the cell count sample, okay? So how we do that is we have I have two Nalgene bottles. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Two Nalgene containers. Um, and I'm gonna pour a little in here just to rinse out all of the water that's in this container, any water drips that might be in there. You can dump that. And then I'm gonna pour this back and forth 40 times. I'm gonna rinse the secondary container. And I'll usually put a little bit water, of water in that container because after I'm done with the density meter, I like to flush it with just regular city water uh, before moving on to alcohol and, and distilled. All right, so now we have our degas sample. The first thing that we want to do with the sample is take the density on it. So how this density meter works is you just take it, insert the sample port into, or the sample tube into uh, the beer. And then I like to take three to four samples of that. And then you're gonna see that the beer is reading at 2.7, 2.6 right now. I'm gonna rinse the end that went in the beer. I'm gonna take this number down on my brew ball. All right, and I know that we're far enough into fermentation on this that we are going to see a lot of cells in here. I'm gonna rinse this real quick with my city water. And then typically what we'll do is this is the last sample today that I need to take with the density meter. Um, so I will draw alcohol into it three times. And then distilled water three times. And then we're ready to shut that down and put that away. We'll also need our pH. We have our pH meter is right tucked under the, the metal table right here. I like to take it out of storage solution, give it a little rinse with distilled water before this goes into our sample. And I'll wait for that reading. All right, I have my pH reading. I'm gonna rinse this pH meter with distilled and get this back into storage solution. Now we have our sample that is degassed. We have our density on it. We have our pH on it. And now we're going to take our sample for cell count because this is what the video is about. You're gonna see me wear a glove for this part of it because one of the things I'm going to do is my my finger is going to come into contact with the sample here. To be honest, normally I would probably just put my thumb under it and, and turn it like this to, to homogenize it, but I'm gonna put a glove on so nobody screams at me. It's probably what you should be doing. I have a little 10 mil flask here, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up to nine with distilled water. So I'm going to fill that to nine mils. I almost panicked thinking that I dumped my sample <laughs> and rinsed it, but I didn't. All right, boom, needs a hair more. Good. What I like to do is I like to take the sample. I have this little mini guy that I like to use for this. I like to swirl this up. There's different things that you can do with this. You could use one of the little disposable pipettes to pull your sample out of here, but I like to swirl it up and add it to a smaller container. And so I'm doing that right here. I just find it a little bit, a little bit easier to handle. And then I'm going to add this sample until I get my one mil of fermenting beer. It takes me to a total of 10 mils. Boom. That's kind of like the perfect pour right in there. So now I have my 10 milliliter dilution, uh, nine parts distilled water, one part fermenting beer. And then I'm going to go thumb over the top of it. And I'm going to turn this over several times because I want to make sure that this dilution that I have is very well uh, homogenous. It's homogenized. Am I saying words? The next thing that we're going to be using is our hemocytometer, which I have over here. Uh, can you see me over here? You can't see me over here. This hemocytometer that you can see right here it has a series of grids on it. This little fella right there. You can count both off the top or the bottom. I have my little slide cover here. And then I have my capillary tubes. And these capillary tubes are just small glass tubes. Like you can see here, there's blue on one end with these. But the idea is I can get this, this mixture homogenized and then I can stick this into it and it'll draw up liquid into it. And then what I'll do is, I'll try to show you without showing you. I'll try to show you a close up before I do it. I'll have my slide on here and then you can see right here, there are these little channels right in the center of this little divot that's cut out. And what I'm going to do is with my slide cover on, I'm going to take my sample in this capillary tube and I'm going to drop it right in there. Okay. Zoom in, zoom out. What's the best way to see this? Yeah. All right. And then I'm going to see this little shiny panel fill with liquid. I don't want to like flood it like with a ton, but make sure you can kind of see the little grid on there. Make sure that you're covering that. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Maybe I can try to move camera over here and show you something magic. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that my sample is well homogenized. I'm going to take my cover slip and put it over the hemocytometer. I'm going to take my capillary tube and place it in here. This is going to be really difficult to see if you can even. I'm going to plug my finger on it. I'm going to see if you can see the, the liquid that is about halfway up it. And then I'm going to go down to my slide here. And just like I said, this little notch that's cut in this top channel, I'm going to place that right in here and I'm going to allow that to fill my sample on there. Uh, I discard this tube once I'm done with it. You can give this slide a moment to settle. Sometimes people will say, but anyhow, I can take this, get this up on my microscope and I am using the 10 times uh, magnifier on this. I'm not a microscope expert. Okay. I was actually wondering the other day if this had a port that you can plug in to put on a computer screen, but it doesn't as far as I can see, but you can do that sometimes too. And that's pretty slick. So let's, let's get in here and I have my cell counter right here. And then what I want to do is you're going to see that there's actually one, two, three, four, there's five blocks. If I'm remembering correctly, I'll take my glasses off. Yeah. There's a five by five grid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to count all of the outside squares in the center, like the, like the number five, like if you roll a five with a pair with, with a die, I always like to say dice, 
but if you roll a five, I could die. And so I'm going to look at each one of these grids. Oh, and this is a really easy one to count. This is really beautiful. So what I do is along the top portion of the grid and the left-hand side of the grid, if there is a cell uh, that is on that line, the outside portion of that line, I don't count it. And then I count all the cells inside of that. And if there happens to be a cell straddling the right hand side border and the bottom, I will count that. And then I take all five cells and I count them up. So let's, let's do it here. My count got 71. And so because of the dilution we're doing, my count, <laughs> my calculator is on my phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, 71 and I'm going to divide it by 20. And then I'm going to move that decimal point one place over. And that is going to be my cells per milliliter, million cells per milliliter. Actually do that math real quick on my phone. All right, so I just did the math and it's 35 and a half million cells per milliliter. Really at this point, I'm just going to break this stuff down, rinse this stuff, clean up. Okay, so big picture, that's how we handle counting cells in a fermenting beer. We do that nine part water, one part fermenting beer. That's our dilution. Uh, we get that onto our hemocytometer, count and then we run that that little math that that i that i mentioned before big picture is is whether you're counting cells tracking ph monitoring temperature pressure gravity in a tank being at sonda for the last several months um, i really see the the real hardcore utility in that you can understand your fermentations on a level that maybe you didn't before it can definitely let you know what's going on with your beer in real time and potentially see problems before you're all the way down the road with a batch of beer. Anyways, that's the way we handle this. I'd be interested to hear any questions or comments below. As always, hope you have a great day. Appreciate you joining us and I'll talk to you later. Bye.